Item number four on today's calendar by Senator Goodwin, Senate Bill 2492 Sub A, an act relating to courts and civil procedure, courts, extreme risk protection orders, criminal offenses, weapons. Senator Goodwin. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. I'd like to begin uh, by thanking a uh, few people here in the chamber. Let me begin by thanking you, Mr. President, for your early and steadfast support on this bill. From the day that I introduced it, you let it be known that you uh, had your support and you never wavered, so thank you. Uh, and I'd like to also thank my 34 co-sponsors from both sides of the aisle. Thank you for your bipartisan support on this very important measure um, that hopefully we're going to pass here in a few minutes. <clears throat> but if you would just indulge me for a minute, I would just like to um, take uh, some time to just tell you generally what this legislation will do. This is in fact a straightforward common sense measure that will in fact save lives here in the state of Rhode Island. This bill is commonly referred to as the red flag bill because individuals often exhibit warning signs or red flags before they commit gun violence on themselves or others. This bill would allow family members and friends to work alongside law enforcement to intervene and protect these individuals from themselves and others if they in fact exhibit those warning signs and have access to a gun. We have garnered, thankfully, a broad support and I'm grateful for that support in these organizations. I'd like to thank the Rhode Island Police Chiefs Association, the Attorney General here in the state of Rhode Island, Governor Raimondo's office, Moms Demand Action, and Rhode Island's Kid Count, just to name a few. Uh, several other states in this country have in fact passed red flag laws, including our neighboring state of Connecticut. And a recent study showed in the state of Connecticut that it was in fact an effective tool for intervening when individuals exhibited suicidal tendencies. Red flag laws can also be an effective tool in preventing mass shootings. A nationwide study of those mass shootings that recently occurred showed and revealed that 42% of those incidents there were documentation that the attacker exhibited prior warning signs. For example, the 19-year-old suspect in the Parkland shooting in Florida recently had in fact displayed many prior warning signs. The alleged shooter's mother herself had even contacted law enforcement regarding her son's behavior. Unfortunately, the state of Florida did not have a red flag law and law enforcement could not intervene to restrict his access to firearms. Currently, nearly, nearly 30 other states across this country are in fact this legislative session considering red flag law laws. Uh, we know that we learned uh, one very important lesson from that Parkland shooting, and that is that the young people across this country were no longer going to remain silent. They are no longer going to remain complicit while legislators sit in chambers across this country and say nothing and do nothing about the gun violence occurring here in our uh, states. And lastly, we all know in this chamber, in our hearts and in our minds, that unfortunately, passage of this bill will not eradicate death gun violence here. But it could be our fervent hope and prayer that we may save some Rhode Island lives. Mr. President, I move its passage. Senator Goodwin moves passage of the act. Is there a second? Second by Senator McAfee, Senator Lynch Potter, uh, Senator Felag, Senator Conley, Senator Gallo, Senator Miller, Senator Jabor, Senator Sosnowski, Senator Nesselbush, Senator Crowley, uh, Senator Casada, Senator Pearson, uh, Senator Metz, uh, Senator Satchel, Senator Cano, uh, Senator G, Senator Corkin, Senator Sheen, uh, Senator Golden, Senator Oya, uh, Senator Seventy, and Senator De Palma. Is there discussion on the act? Senator Nesselbush. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I rise to congratulate Whip Goodwin and Senator Seveny uh, on these gun control measures. I think as we approach the final days of uh, this year's General Assembly, uh, gun control measures are among the most important uh, issues that we will face uh, as a Senate body. As the Whip said uh, so eloquently, you know, people are dying and the time to think about and the time to study these issues is long past. Rhode Island needs action, bold action like that of Whip Goldwyn and Senator Seveny. Uh, and I think um, as the atmosphere in our nation demands that we will be faced with uh, increasing measures uh, for gun control. And having said that, I'm actually very glad to learn that Rhode Island is among uh, leaders in the nation in gun control. We actually uh, have very good gun control laws, but this is certainly an issue where Rhode Island uh, could afford to be the absolute leader in the nation. So I applaud my colleagues, and I think this is a great start, and I hope we continue along this path. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Nesselboy. Senator Morgan. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, will the sponsor yield to a question? Will the sponsor yield to a question? Certainly, Senator. Thank you. Well, I applaud the effort that is being made to help our children and keep our children safe. Um, I've been reading and reading this bill over and over and over, and I cannot find anything specific to children in schools. So, I mean, while we want to protect our children, there's nothing in this legislation or this bill saying, can you point out a paragraph that says no. anything specific to our schools and keeping our kids safe in schools? No. Everyone's included in this bill, Senator. Adults, children, you name it. The elderly, infants, it's all. Okay. Inclusive, like all, Rhode like all laws generally pertain okay, to all Rhode Islanders. Because all I see this law doing is, is going against our constitutional rights, and that's I see it violating our constitutional rights. But I want to keep our kids safe. That is definitely what we need to do. But I don't see anything in this bill to keep our kids safe. Sadly, Senator, I disagree, but uh, that's what's great about this chamber and great about America. Thank you. Uh, Senator Labadi. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise, I think, in a timely fashion because I hear my two colleagues, Senator Nestle Bush and Senator Morgan, ask their pertinent questions, and uh, I feel like I'm a person in the middle of, of this issue on a, on a political platform. Uh, I want to start from the beginning that I represent an area and it's my personal belief that the Second Amendment is indeed a sacrosanct amendment to our Constitution. It's part of our Bill of Rights. It's the basic rights that have been afforded to us by the Founding Fathers. Uh, but I think when we use the word gun control, I think it has, with all due respect to my colleague Senator Nesselbush, that may have a negative connotation that it's somehow uh, one way or the other. Uh, I don't look at this bill uh, as a gun control bill. Instead, I look at this bill as a common sense compromise to a epidemic in this country. Uh, and I say that with all due respect and with a view uh, certainly inclined to fully support uh, all of the NRA's uh, topics and issues regarding the preservation of their guns. Uh, but uh, And one person that wasn't uh, mentioned is I want to thank our chairwoman, Senator Erin Lynch Prada, who we spent hours and hours of testimony hearing this and uh, through her leadership we're allowed to hear hundreds of people testify on this particular bill. And, and I come down uh, after great reservations and great uh, continuous reading of this bill, and I come down to the point that this is not a gun control bill. And instead, it's a common sense compromise. We often hear the phrase being said that we really, the massacres that we have is not due to the guns, but rather due to the behavior of the shooter. And everybody talk, talks about a mental health issue and all the issues that surround that. And I think that this bill gets to the very heart of that topic. And it does so in a very precise procedural way. And that's why I am standing in support of the WHIPS bill. Uh, I look at it quickly. First of all, this is not going to be done in any rinky-dink court. This is going to be brought in the Superior Court. 
the real courts, for those of you that are not lawyers. It's, it's going to be done, it's going to be done uh, on a petition from law enforcement, not some jilted lover out there that's angry with her uh, boyfriend. It's going to be done on a standard of proof of clear and convincing evidence after finding by a judge. And it also, among other things, will allow for the review of any ruling against that particular person. So I think what we're doing here is we're attempting to target the very people that may potentially cause harm, Senator Morgan, not only to our children, but to our adults, to our teachers, to the security people, to the custodian, to everybody in that classroom, or God forbid, anybody in this building or any other public building. And so I applaud the whip for having an open mind, a compromising mind, for having a bill that I think tucks it rather nicely. And it's certainly not something that's going to open the floodgates to gun control universally in the state of Rhode Island. It's not going to open the floodgates to removing guns, you know, in the middle of the night from people's households. I, I, I applaud her. I support this. I think it's a common sense approach to this very, very, very polarizing issue. Thank you, Senator Lombardi. Senator Aptakis. Thank you, Mr. President. I also echo some of the sentiments that Senator Lombardi had just uh, spoken, but what's important, ladies and gentlemen, is that word compromise. Now, during the Senate Judiciary Committee hearings and the vote, we heard that this bill was sub aid, that we have compromise, but when I spoke to the opposition, that wasn't the case. But I want to make sure, now we're not going to get it right the first time, we know we're not going to get a bill 100% right, and I commend Senator Goodwin. Might be 98%, 95 But what I want to do from here to next year, for those that do come back, they get reelected, that we, if we find some flaw in this legislation, a flaw, that those that are in opposition to the bill, that we correct that flaw and make it a better bill, an even better bill. So I think that's very important when we vote here tonight that we make sure that we compromised. So if those opposed to the bill find something, an issue, a court order, or something that we missed, that we make sure that we find it, and that will make it a very good 100% bill that's going to be for all of us here satisfactory for the people of our state. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Packer. Senator Metz. Yes, thank you, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen. I, I want to commend Senator Goodwin and Senator Seventy for the for the bills, the, the bill that we just passed, and, and certainly this one. And as the administrator that was in charge of, of uh, building security when when I was a, a vice principal at Central High School, and having to practice the lockdowns and the shelters in place. And even today, now I've been retired about eight years now, but even today, in Senate education, we had some students come uh, from the student union uh, before Senator Gallo's committee and said Senate education that I'm on. And the students, they express uh, the, not only the fears and the concerns, they didn't want more police in the schools. You could really feel... Uh, you know the the tenseness. You could you could feel uh, you could you could feel how the students uh, the stress that the students feel during these times, and as Sen as, as Senator uh, Goodwin had alluded to. You know, they want to hear more than you know. We every, everyone was saying uh, our thoughts and our prayers are with you. Well, the students got tired of hearing that, and I don't blame them because we, we needed action. And just and, and very similar, uh, when, when so many of you helped, helped us with the bill last year on the domestic violence, taking the, the guns away from abusers, it was based on common sense, public safety. There was a balance of, of the public safety and the Second Amendment rights. Because don't think that the uh, people on both sides didn't come up and present their arguments and the committee had to wrestle with how are we, how are we, gonna, how are we gonna get there? We all had the same objective. 
We all had the same objective. Everybody wanted to protect uh, human life, uh, whether, it, whether it was uh, in, in a domestic uh, you know, relationship, whether it's the kids in school. We all wanted to do that, and at the same time, we also wanted to protect the Second Amendment rights. So action was needed. These bills are good common sense. And for me, the highlight of the, highlight of, of, of the bills that we're doing now, it's being done without both sides demonizing one another. Because when you do that, the wall goes up and no one listens. No one listens. That's what they, that's what they, told, that's what they taught us in Sunday school. God gave you one mouth and two ears. So do less, I'm gonna cut it off in a minute. So do less talking and more listening. So when you listen to one another and you're trying to work out something that's really gonna benefit people and certainly taking the stress off of our students is a big thing. And I commend them for the action and standing up for their rights and want to be safe while they go, while they go to school. And it used to, it used to uh, really stress me out just having to think about planning these things. And, I, and, the, and the Providence Police and the Providence Fire Department, they were very helpful with me planning building security at Central High School when I was still working. So I commend the sponsors, I commend Senator Goodwin on this, and I, and I certainly will uh, be supporting this, and I just hope that we can still work together without demonizing each other, bringing the balance that we, that we need and come up with common sense legislation. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Metz. Senator Paolino. Thank you, Mr. President. At the risk of uh, repeating what my colleagues have said, I echo the comments of Senator Raptakis and Senator Lombardi. I do not believe this legislation will impact the law-abiding gun owner in Rhode Island. And with that, I will support this legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Paolino. Senator Satchel. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm, I'm not on the Judiciary Committee. Um, you know, and when it comes to this issue, I always try to listen to what the red team has to say and what the yellow team has to say. And one of the things that I looked at when it came to this issue and when it came to the domestic violence bill last year was the issue of judicial discretion. And I think that this legislation has protections in it both for the accuser and the accused. This is not a blanket gun confiscation bill. Okay? This bill gives people the opportunity to be heard in court. On the regular protection orders, it's within 21 days of the petition. And the petition is also something that's very important, too. This is not just some hearsay accusation that somebody's going to make in the middle of dinner or something like that. This is a sworn affidavit. This is done under oath. So if somebody is coming and making these accusations and making these complaints, they're doing so under oath. And in the case of an extreme protection order, there will be a hearing within seven days. So they get to be heard even quicker. So I feel that there are protections in this legislation for both gun owners and people who feel that they may be in danger. And for those reasons, I'm supporting this bill. Thank you, Senator Satchel. Senator Miller. Um, I rise in support of this bill, but I want to make it clear to all the members and those who might be uh, paying attention to this issue. I have a history in this uh, when it comes to uh, bills that uh, may or may not restrict gun ownership. And I can tell you because of that history, I often hear from either students or mothers, parents, I hear from those who um, manage and own public spaces and those who manage and own places where a large amount of people may congregate. And I can tell you that we have a responsibility and these bills address some of that responsibility to make students, parents, those who congregate in public feel safer. And these bills are progress towards that. But I can tell you those who are familiar with these bills and are concerned that they still don't feel safe, don't feel safe with just these two bills passed in their current form. So I hope we work on this issue and continue to work on this issue until we can hear from constituents, students, parents, that they feel safe. And that may also mean revisiting these bills in the future to see if they actually um, functioned as they were intended to function. 
So I do think we have more work to do on this issue, and I will continue saying that we need to do more work on these issues until I hear back from Rhode Islanders that they feel safe in their workplace or their place of learning. Thank you, Senator Miller. Senator Archambault. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to support the bill, and I commend the sponsors on it. But I want to point out a few things that concerned me in Senate Judiciary when this bill was presented to us. I am an attorney, and I deal with cases on a weekly basis in court that have problematic situations, typically involving violence and restraining orders and situations that are untenable and volatile. And I've learned over the years that there's only really so much preventative medicine that you can do to try to keep people safe. And that has made me compassionate, I hope, and a little bit more resolved to see that safety stays at the forefront of all decisions that I make in my limited capacity. When I looked at this bill, I was vocal in committee, and I was vocal in a piece that I wrote, and I was vocal to members in the red team and the yellow team, using the word team loosely here, that procedural due process should not be eroded when we're trying to keep people safe. I was adamant that the bill in its first form before it was a sub A didn't have enough procedural due process, protections that enabled law-abiding gun owners to keep their property rights in the face of clearly false accusations. Bill has a sub A. We've moved forward in a way that I think is very sound procedurally, except for something that I, I have to point out. And by all means, I don't want to come off as the skunk at the lawn party here. I support the legislation, and I think it's going to keep people safe, and it's a step in the right direction. But we need to be mindful that this is a balancing of interest. What I'm about to say is accurate. If there's a clear evidence that a petition is based on bad faith, erroneous information, or if there's perjured testimony, there isn't an appeal from that. Our parliamentarian will tell you and the attorneys in the room that in the law there are safeguards to appeal such things. That's devoid from this bill. That may seem like a, an incidental point. But I would have liked to have seen that change. And I think that adding such a sub B maybe on the other side, I, I'm not even sure where it is on the other side, would make me feel a lot more comfortable. Um, the spirit of the bill is sound. We need to do something. We need to keep people safe. We're trying to do it. I think everybody's heart is really in the right place. But I would like to see that appeal from a petition where somebody's clearly lied, available, because it happens. People lie. People lied. People lied to me when I was a cop. They lied to me as a prosecutor. They lied to me as a defense attorney. People lie. Happens every day in our court systems. If we're going to stand here and not think that way, we're fooling ourselves. There needs to be a safety net for that, for the law-abiding people. It may seem like a small piece. You do that, and I feel really comfortable with it. I support the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Archibald. Uh, Senator Crowley. Thank you, Mr. President. I also rise in support of this piece of legislation. I think it's time for us as Rhode Islanders to be proactive and not wait till something happens in our school or in our theaters or in the mall. Uh, where hundreds or thousands or uh, 52, I don't care how many we're talking about, get shot and killed because we sat here and did nothing. Uh, while I believe very firmly in the Second Amendment, I don't believe this inhibits your Second Amendment right in any shape, form, or manner. It doesn't say all citizens of the state of Rhode Island cannot have a gun. 
cannot own a gun, cannot possess a gun. What it simply says is that the police department, uh, after certain wit has to make the petition. They have to get the witnesses. They have to make sure that when they go to court, the person that they're talking about is truly, truly a person who can harm himself, who can harm a child, or who can harm the general public. And for those reasons, I will support this legislation, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Crowley. Further discussion? <laughs> Senator Goodwin. Uh, before Senator Goodwin, Senator Jabor. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. I want to rise in support of the bill, but um, I want to commend Senator Goodwin for having the courage on a very difficult topic. And while the bill provides judicial procedure um, to obtain necessary restraining orders um, and trying to identify where there may be an irresponsible owner of a gun, we're not talking about responsible owners. We're talking about individuals that have issues, they've been identified, they could be irres irresponsible with the use of a weapon, and we've provided the procedure. Senator Morgan mentions it doesn't say anything about schools. Senator Morgan, I would say to you, as Senator Goodwin said, yes, this is a blanket bill. But let's be realistic. If you look around our country, and God forbid not here in Rhode Island, we've had some massive shootings. But most of them have been targeted that have been a real atrocity. There was a nightclub. And there was a mall shooting that was very, very severe and others. But schools are the targets. Schools are clearly the targets. Parents are concerned. Students are concerned. Um, I think this is a step in the right direction. But Mr. President and members of the Senate, while I will support this, I want to encourage our body to think about how we best protect children in our school system. And we begin a discussion, Mr. President, on that. And the discussion should be about what type of security system we really want to put in our schools here in Rhode Island. We're a small enough state to implement a security system that will protect our students. And we have to look at the cost of that. Uh, is it possible that we could have some type of a panic button or a lockdown system implemented in Rhode Island so that every children is safe and that a parent is also safe at home or at work thinking that their child is not only protected by a bill like Senator Goodwin and maybe other legislative bills, but also do we have a real security system in place in our schools here in Rhode Island? I think um, it's doable in a state of this size. I think it's good that this body be out front and let the public know that it's a tough issue, but we want to tackle it. And of course, there's a financial question. And so we have to think about what that cost is going to be and whether we are willing to make a hard decision and commit money to something such as a security system in the schools throughout the state. So I'm going to support the bill, and I'm hoping that in the future we're going to work hard on the issue of a school security system statewide. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Jabor. Further discussion? Madam Whip. Thank you, Mr. President. Just briefly, uh, I was very remiss in not thanking our Chairwoman of Judiciary, Senator Lynch Prada, and all the members of the uh, Judiciary Committee who sat to uh, past 2 a.m. and heard from hundreds and hundreds of Rhode Islanders on this issue. Thank you, Erin. Certainly appreciate it, and all the members of the Judiciary. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Goodwin. The clerk will please unlock the machine. If all senators have recorded their vote, the clerk will lock the machine. There are 33 votes in the affirmative, one in the negative, and the act passes. Item number one on today's calendar is Senate Bill 2292 Sub A by Senator Seventy, an act relating to criminal offenses, weapons. Senator Seventy. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, uh, and uh, through you to my colleagues in the Senate. Uh, this bill is a uh, is a bill that uh, uh, prohibits the possession of uh, 
devices that increase the fire of a semi-automatic weapon. Um, that includes bump stocks, binary triggers, trigger cranks, any device that turns a, uh, a semi-automatic weapon into uh, something that, uh, that behaves like a machine gun um, is illegal. And uh, people who own one now will have 90 days uh, to get rid of it. And, uh, and that's it. I, uh, I move passage. Senator Seventy moves passage of the act. Seconded by Senator McCaffrey, Senator, Senator Goodwin, Senator Lynch Prada, Senator Gallo, Senator Conley, uh, Senator Sosnowski, Senator Crowley, Senator Casada, Senator Metz, uh, Senator Cano, uh, Senator Sheehan, uh, Senator Corkin, uh, Senator Oya, Senator Golden, uh, Senator Satchel, and Senator De Palma. Is the discussion on the legislation? Senator Sheehan. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise in strong support of this legislation. Uh, I also had uh, the same legislation in myself. I certainly commend Senator Savenny on this legislation. Uh, this was the type of device that allowed a semi-automatic wep semi weapon in Las Vegas to be used to slaughter uh, some many people in Vegas uh, in recent times. I think it's something we need to make as uh, make into law because right now you're able to own one of these devices uh, so long as you don't use it. That doesn't seem to make sense. I think we need to outlaw also uh, the ownership as well as the use of it. With that, I support this measure. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Sheehan. Further discussion on the act? Hearing none, the clerk will please unlock the machine. Have all senators recorded their vote? The clerk will lock the machine. There were 33 votes in the affirmative, one in the negative, and the act passes.